this is Olivier from Y Story. Thank you so much for everybody who's here to, to watch this. And I'm very excited because today I will be speaking to someone I've been dying to speak to for a while. And for those who know me, who've worked with me, who've read my posts and seen what I share, they know I'm all about understanding your potential and share it through value as your purpose. And this is why the guest I have on today means especially much to me. Uh, Bob Berg, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so it's much. great. Great to be with you. I've so enjoyed getting to know you over social media. Thank you. It's a, ple it's a pleasure. And for those of you who haven't read The Go-Giver, the book that uh, Bob co-wrote with uh, John David Mann, uh, it is a staple, okay? It's not just a staple for business people. To me, it is a staple for human beings in general. It should be mandatory, not just in business school, but in school, schools all over the world, maybe even just in every common household. And <laughs> that is because I think the go-giver touches upon a wisdom that we've all known and lost along the way at some point. And it shares that in a way as a parable, as a short story that's so accessible uh, that I find like everybody should know about it. And so Bob, in reading your book and hearing your talks and reading your posts, I cannot help but you know make the assumptions that you are a guy who believes that entrepreneurs are about more than just making money and keeping the economy alive, but actually making the world a better place, being agents of change. What do you have to say about that? Sure. And first of all, thank you for those very, very kind words. I'm, I'm just deeply honored to know that you, you feel that way about, uh, about the book. Uh, yeah, in terms of entrepreneurship, what, what we find is that most entrepreneurs, and this is not everyone, you know, people are individuals and everyone has their own motivation, their own reasons for doing things. But by and large, overwhelmingly, we find that most entrepreneurs begin a business because they are passionate about a certain thing, mm -hmm. something that they love, something that they tend to be good at, either naturally or they've learned to be, or usually a combination of both. And they desire to bring value to the world to, as we like to say, nudge the world forward. And I think as human beings, most of us you know, we, we just any, any human being, I think, again, not all, but most want to feel as though we're making a difference, as though we're, we're making the world a better place by being here. Now, as entrepreneurs, we tend to do that mainly through our work. Now, that doesn't mean we don't also uh, can't uh, be involved in other activities, charities, you know, and so forth. But we tend to spend the most time on our work. And so, uh, you know, as, as, as John and I said in the, in the Go-Giver, I think it was Pindar, the main mentor, who said uh, that, that most people who built a fortune were far more interested in what they gave than what they got, right? Uh, in other words, they had a reason for wanting to do that thing, okay? Right. And, and that's typically what it is. That doesn't mean money isn't important. Of course it's important, and it's very welcome when you've provided lots of value to the marketplace. It just tends not to be the leading reason as to right. why most entrepreneurs right. go into business. Yeah, uh, I, I think that is so beautiful. And it, it's exactly, you know, what I had to find out after 20 years of going in the other direction that I lost my flame along the way somewhere, right? And you want to go back and realize, no, I'm doing this for a specific reason. Sure. And, and, and now maybe for those of us who haven't read the book yet, shame on them. Um, <laughs> maybe you could quickly just like summarize the, the premise of the book. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. The, the premise is basically that shifting your focus, and this is really the, the key, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that doing so is not only a more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. And, and not for any way out there, woo-woo type of magical, mystical reasons. Not at all. It's actually very logical. It makes very rational sense. When you're that person who can take your focus off of yourself 
and place it on serving others, on discovering what they need, what they want, what they desire. When you can move your focus off of yourself and place it on helping other people solve and overcome their challenges and problems, when you can focus on helping another person get closer to happiness, if you will, people feel good about you. Mm -hmm. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to do business with you if, if that's appropriate, if they need what you offer. But they definitely want to tell others about you. They want to be your personal walking ambassador. And that's really, you know, that's, that's the basic premise of the, of the book itself. Which is basically what business is all about. We want Absolutely. people to be loyal. We want people to be our fans, right? We want to get into relationship with people. Yeah, right? and remember, and this is, I think, is is so important. And I, I say this whenever I speak at sales conferences. It's one of the first things I'll say, and that is, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to mm -hmm. meet, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy from you because you need the money or because you want the sale, they're not even gonna buy from you because you're just a really nice human being. Yeah, They're gonna yeah. buy from you because they believe they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And when you think about it, that's the only reason anyone should buy from you or from me or from anyone else. So, so now we take it a step further. This is when we realize that that entrepreneur or salespeople who can focus on the value they bring to the other person. Remember, not it's not about them. They're not buying for your reasons or my reasons. So when you can focus on them and they know you genuinely and authentically care that you have their best interest, their well-being at heart, now you've created that benevolent context for the sale to take place. Absolutely. I love that. To me, that sounds like a natural state of being, like sure. being a human being. Right? Ah, ah, absolutely. Right? So mm -hmm. there was a there was a specific thing you posted that triggered this interview. Okay. And that was, I mean, you kind of touched upon it, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. You said, does it make money? It's not a bad question. It's just a bad first question. Right, right, right. That so was, yeah. Like the sequence of the question. Yeah. I, I, no, that's, that's great. I, I love that you bring that up. Uh, so in the story, when Pindar, the main mentor, was, taught, was first talking to Joe, Joe was sort of looking at everything from the money aspect first. And Pindar was trying to kind of gently reel him back a little bit and get him to kind of see things, you know, as uh, from, a, from a, a much more uh, pra benevolent and practical point of view. Okay. And, and Joe at one point said, well, so are you saying asking if something will make money isn't, a, you know, isn't a good question? And Pindar said, no, asking if something will make money is a, a, a great question, okay? It's just a bad first question. Mm -hmm. First ask, will it serve? If the answer is yes, then ask, will it make money? So let, let's go a little bit deeper into this, okay? So let's say you're focused when you create something or you decide to sell something or you know whatever it is you're gonna bring to the marketplace. Your first question is, will it make money? Well, why is that a wrong question? Why is that a bad first question? Because remember, no one's buying because you wanna make money. So if it doesn't serve, it doesn't matter how much the, the cost of goods sold were and how much you're, you plan to charge for it and how much this and that, it's not happening. You're not gonna make money from it, okay? Now, on the other hand, if you ask, will it serve? Now, we can say serve in terms of, will it add value to the world? Of course, will it serve in terms of, is there a marketplace for it? Either a current one or one you feel you can develop. That's part of entrepreneurship. Sometimes we don't know, right? But if you believe enough in it that you think you will, ask that question. Will it serve? Is there a marketplace? Will people buy it? Now, if the answer is yes to that, now you've then got to ask, will it make money? Because remember, you can have a great product or service. Everyone can buy it. But if there's no profit in it, well, you've just got a, a hobby. Yeah. And now hobbies yeah. are great. We enjoy hobbies. Uh, we recommend hobbies. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're yeah. talking about for a business, the most practical, the most profitable question you can ask is first, will it serve? Is there a marketplace for it? Okay, then ask, okay, there is. Now, will it make money? Incredible. I mean, it's such a 
simple premise. But, you know, when I read your book, I told you, I read it during a power outage. My wife actually read it to me in front of the fireplace. Uh, so cool. Yeah, thank and, you. <laughs> and the incredible thing is that it is ancient knowledge to me that was just brought back to the surface. <laughs> At this point, Bob, just an honest, big thank you to you and to John for, uh, for your service to mankind, because that's wow. how I see it. When someone shares the truth with, in a book like this, to me, that is a service. You know, it's a legacy that well, we have to embrace. And You know, uh, that's, the, that's really, it's, it's the nicest, nicest compliment we could receive, because, you know, to know that someone such as you, a very high quality person, uh, again, as I said, a person I've gotten to be good friends with on, on social media. This is the first time we've actually spoken, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, and I know the, the the great work you're doing and the tremendous value you're adding. And, uh, you know, it's it's a compliment when someone like yourself really is an ambassador of the book and, and you really you're an embodiment of the message itself. So I thank you. Thank you. It was written for people like me so we can share the message. So. I invite everybody, grab a copy, download it, listen to it, pass it on. This wisdom has to live, it has to spread. This is how entrepreneurship and the world in general as such will get better. Follow uh, Bob Berg on social. You are on Instagram, right? You are on LinkedIn. Yeah, you know, if they can find me pretty much, if they go to Berg, B-U-R-G dot com, okay, where they can also read a chapter of any of the books in the series, uh, uh, chapter one and chapter two, I think. But if they scroll all the way down, they'll see where I am on social media and yeah. can connect with me there. Perfect. Well, I invite everybody to connect. It's well worth it. Thank you to everybody who's watching this. And I hope to see you again soon.